Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for y'all. So today we are, at, at the time I'm recording this anyway, at the very top of Season 13. Uh, just launched, although that the time of this video is coming out, I imagine it is a couple days into the season. Uh, in any case, I'm going to be talking about some of my builds for this season. Um, I've been doing this the past couple of months where, you know, the top of the month I'll kind of show off some of the lists that I've been working on and what I plan to change about the list uh, moving forward into the next season. Uh, now that we have a ban list coming up, I want to talk specifically about just a few of the decks rather than going over every single one of them because not every single one of my deck, uh, decks that I have rather uh, hasn't gone major changes, uh, at least not to the degree that the ones that are uh, impacted by the ban list. So I want to talk specifically about those decks a little bit and we'll go over the changes and how I think they will play differently in the new meta. Uh, before we talk about that though, I really briefly want to talk about my Patreon. Um, it's going to be linked in the description below. I actually very recently added a new perk uh, at the end of this video and the videos moving forward. Uh, you're going to be seeing during the outro um, a list of people uh, who are contributing uh, to the Patreon over there uh, just to show special thanks to them. Um, it's one of the many perks that are available on the Patreon there, uh, the primary of which is going to be additional daily Master Duel content. So uh, if you head over there, you can find some previews for upcoming videos, you can find games that are exclusive to the Patreon, you can find some Q&As, um, some of my responses to those questions, and of course you will also be uh, credited if you subscribe over on Patreon. It's just five bucks a month, just about the price you pay for a booster pack, and you definitely get a lot more value than that. So. Um, for those of you who are checking it out and uh, you know, contributing over there, thank you very much. It is very much appreciated. Um, in any case, though, like I said, we're going to be talking mainly about some of the uh, updates to the decks here post ban list. So we're going to be focusing on the decks that I think are going to have the most major impact, most major changes there. Uh, Branded Despia, Adam Anticipator, and Sky Striker. And I'm just realizing I didn't set my three cards for Branded Despia. Oh, no. Uh, you can see I do have quite a swath of other decks here, but again, these haven't really changed too much following the ban list. Uh, definitely not nearly to the same degree that these three decks have, so uh, these three are definitely going to be the decks that I want to focus primarily on. Let's go ahead and start with Branded Despia. Uh, to be fair, probably the least has changed overall with this deck, although I think moving forward, at least for my initial build post-ban list, uh, I'm going to be trying Allure of Darknesses in the deck once again. So, um, Alibur, as we all know, has now gone from three to two copies, not at the time of recording this, but it will be in the near future. So, um, I've seen a lot of people talk about different ways to make up for this consistency hit. Um, one of the main things that people have been suggesting, and something I certainly consider myself, is uh, just jamming in a single copy of Spring In's kit instead of the third Alibur. Uh, indeed, kit has seen play in Branded Despia relatively consistently since its release. Um, I don't think the vast majority of decks have ever been playing it. Um, although, except I think that was the case when the deck first came out. I think most decks, when um, you know this uh, this archetype and you know branded fusion and all that uh, first got that power boost, I think people were playing Kit in addition to Alibur. But a lot of people dropped it. I think the main reason that Kit is you know, kind of meh, in my opinion, is this part here. Um, like, yes, you get to add a branded fusion from your deck to your hand, but you then have to place a card from your hand on the bottom of the deck. That doesn't make the card unplayable by any means, but I think that loss of advantage is going to be huge for Branded Despia, a deck that really thrives on having a lot of advantage over your opponent. Um, similarly, I've seen people suggest playing Gold Sarcophagus. You know what? I just realized... Oh, no, it's right here. Okay, good. <laughs> um, you know, if you're not playing Foolish Burial on the deck uh, before, then I would definitely suggest playing this over your third Alibur. Uh, this, of course, being able to send the Despian Tragedy and then add the Alibur as a result. Um, I've seen some people also suggest um, the Gold... That's not how you spell Sarcophagus. I have no idea how you spell that card... Or that uh, card's name. Uh, this card, Gold Sarcophagus. Uh, you can use this kind of similarly to Foolish Burial. Um, by banishing the Despian Tragedy with the Gold Sarcophagus, uh, you can use that to add the Alibur from deck to hand. I'm not sure that I'm a huge fan of that, though, honestly. Foolish does at least have some other functions, like you can send a Fairy Tale Snow if you really need to, although that's pretty rare. Um, you can also send something to add back with Branded in Red. Uh, that's also very rare, but I've definitely been in that situation more than once, where um, I just need some amount of plays to get going, and then I can just Foolish something, and then add back and fuse with Branded in Red. Gold Sarcophagus kind of doesn't have that functionality. 
Um, it's exclusively for banishing the Despian Tragedy. And I'm not a huge fan of cards that have exactly one function um, outside of a very consistent combo. Like, you know, I'm really not trying to top that Gold Sarcophagus pretty much ever is kind of what I'm getting at. Whereas Foolish Burial has some other applications uh, that Gold Sark doesn't necessarily... I don't think Gold Sark is a bad choice for the deck by any means, but um, it's not one that I'm going to be personally turning to. Like I said, I'm going to look more towards Allure of Darkness. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. One, um, I think Allure makes up for the consistency loss with the... Um, Alibur in multiple ways. Not only does it, of course, filter through more cards of your deck, making it more likely to draw Alibur or Branded Opening or something like that, but you can also banish Despian Tragedy with the Allure, and then if you don't draw the Alibur, you can just add it with a Despian Tragedy. Um, kind of similar to the philosophy of banishing Despian Tragedy with the Gold Sark. Now, of course, Gold Sark can banish directly from the deck, whereas with the Lure, it has to be, you know, the tragedy has to be in your hand. So, um, in that regard, it might not be quite as consistent of a means of banishing, but I think the additional function that Allure adds um, makes it a little bit better. Um, of course, you know, it's not like Despian Tragedy is the only dark monster in our deck. There are certainly many different cards you could potentially banish with Allure, but of course we are looking to banish the Despian Tragedy over pretty much everything else, ideally. So, um, as far as what I took out to include the Allure is, of course... Um, aside from the third Alibur, I did also drop the Branded Lost and the uh, Tri Brigade Mercurier as well. So, uh, yeah, Branded Lost is out, and the Mercurier uh, similarly is also out. Um, I've gotten very back and forth about Branded Lost and Tri Brigade Mercurier. Uh, I was playing them for the latest iteration of the deck, and they were performing alright, but they were a little bit. Um, I don't want to say they're unnecessary, but uh, they're a little bit extra. Like, you definitely don't need them to make the deck function by any means, and even when you have them, the t it's still few and far between when, like, um, you know, you add something off Branded Lost, like the Mercurier, and the Mercurier ends up really mattering. Like, there are certainly games where that does happen, but not nearly often enough that I, I think that they'll be very sorely missed. I would still like to include them in the deck, I don't think they're bad cards by any means, but it's always been a matter of space in the deck, right? Um, you know, I've talked about this before, I usually like to build decks not just like, you know, getting up to 40 and then stopping. Usually what I'll do is I'll actually build the deck up to like 45 cards and then I'll just trim it down to 40, uh, taking out what I consider to be uh, the least useful, least needed uh, 5 cards among those. and. Branded Loss and Tri Brigade Mercurier are very often cards like 41 and 42 in that regard, uh, where they're the last cards I end up cutting in order to get it down to 40. So uh, I don't think they're bad, again, by any means, but I also don't think they're very necessary. Otherwise, the deck doesn't really change. Honestly, overall, the deck doesn't change a whole lot by any means. Um, it still functions combo-wise and play-wise exactly the same. Um, it's just that you draw Alibur a little bit less often now, which I think is fine. I think it's a fine hit for the deck there. Um, I think it's honestly probably the best set they could have done for the deck. Um, you know, in the OCG, I think they just straight out put Branded Fusion to one, which I think just ultimately guts and, and kills the deck. Uh, if you only have one Branded Fusion and it gets Ash Blossom, then, like, your deck just doesn't function um, as a Branded Despia player, and that feels bad, but I think this minor consistency hit... Um, also, given that, you know, we're likely going to have decks in the near future that will power creep Branded Despia out of the format, or into a lower tier, not necessarily out of the format altogether, but more likely into a lower tier, um, I don't think major hits like Branded Fusion to 1 are necessary. Alright, so those are the changes that we're making to our Branded Despia deck. Let's go ahead and dive into our Ad Emancipator deck next. Now, Ad Emancipator deck is the one that's changed probably the most dramatically. As you can see... Uh, we are down to a 40-card list now, uh, post-ban list with the Block Dragon going to 1. Beforehand, I was playing Ad Emancipator as a 60-card deck, and um, I was pretty adamant, <laughs> I didn't even mean to make that pun there, uh, I was pretty adamant that I thought the 60-card build was better, and I think with Block Dragon being at 3, uh, if that's the case, I do think the 60-card build is better. However, with Block Dragon only going down to 1 copy, um, it becomes a lot harder to mill it off of the grass. Uh, when you have three copies, you know, in a 60-card deck, um, if you're milling an average of 20 cards off of grass, uh, then you can expect to mill, um, on average, you know, one of your three of the vast majority of the time. Uh, that's what made grass so good in Ad Emancipator, was the ability to mill block at least one block dragon pretty much every single time you resolve grass. Um, and just having that instant setup is so, so nice. But now that block dragon is down to only one copy, 
Being able to melt like that off of that grass look screener is no longer nearly as consistent as it was before. So um, I think in order to make the deck more consistent, we ultimately go down to 40 from 60. That of course means removing cards like Small World and other filler kind of cards as well. Uh, the Zeno guitars are also completely out um, since, you know, it's not really that great to have just one, I think, in a 40 card list. It's kind of mid, honestly. I did think about including it. it. Again, I usually like to build decks out to 45 cards, and a single copy of Xeno Guitar was among that 45. Um, it might have even been like 41 or 42, but ultimately decided to cut it out of the deck. That might not be the case moving forward. Uh, one thing I was a little bit uncertain of in this 40 card build is including like two Imperms and a Veiler. Like, most Adam Emancipator decks, particularly ones that are at 40 cards, want to jam as many hits off of the Excavates as possible. And even though these staple cards are very powerful, um, you know, they will still ultimately kind of um, gunk up your deck as far as, like, hit, again, hitting rock monsters off of Excavates. That said, uh, moving forward in the new format with Block Dragon at 1, resolving Gallant Granite is going to be a lot more important for Adam Emancipators. And, um... I really like having the cross out as a nader uh, to hit both Imperm and Valor, uh, having the option to hit either of these cards, of course in addition to like, you know, Maxi, Ash Blossom, Nibiru, all that fun stuff. I think having the option to hit both Imperm and Valor that would stop the Gallant Granite from searching Block Dragon is probably going to be pretty important moving forward. I don't know that that's going to be the case necessarily. You know, I could very easily test this build and then find that Oh, I'm not hitting like any of my excavates. Okay, we'll just take these out and put in more rock monsters, and like maybe even to such an extent that we just jam 37 monsters and uh, or 38 rather in two seconds light, because seconds light is at two. However, at that stage, I do think if you're going to be playing like 38 monsters, I think even then call, two call by are, are the you know better spells to have than two seconds light. So, um, yeah, this is the build that I think is going to be the most experimented on among these three major. Uh, uh, decks that had major changes in them. Uh, this one in particular, you know, I am pretty pretty certain I want a 40 card build. I might still even experiment with a grass build even with Block Dragon being at one, but I'm relatively certain I'm fine with it being a 40 card deck and I think that's optimally where I'd like to be. I'm just not sure again about the overall ratios of like staples to rock monsters to all that fun stuff. Three Roxies is actually going to be, the third Roxy is going to be a pretty decent boost to this deck following the limitation of Block Dragon. Um, you know, beforehand it wasn't really, like, you know, Roxy's going from 3 to 2 wasn't super duper impactful, but to be fair, Roxy's is also a very, very important starter for Ad Emancipators. It's ideally uh, one of the best starters you'd like to have. Uh, Roxy's plus any extender, any level 4 monster that can special summon itself will get you a setup, so... Um, with the consistency being hit in one spot, I think it's important to look at the consistency being improved in another. Um, and while, of course, Roxy's isn't nearly as powerful as Block Dragon for this deck, I do still think it is a powerful enough card that I am, I'm just very grateful to have that extra copy now that Block Dragon's at one. Would like an extra copy of Analyzer still. I think with Block Dragon going to one, this card could definitely come to three, but um, I think even without that, it could have still come to three. Um, Analyzer, I don't think, is, like, the the card. It's really Researcher, I think, more, um, that should have gone to 2. I'm still very surprised that Analyzer went to 2, but, um, in any case, uh, this, I think, or at least a 40-card build is gonna be where Adam Emancipator wants to be moving forward. Even if it's not this, like, exact build, I still think 40 cards is the best spot for the deck to be at, um, at this stage in time. If further testing disproves that, then I'm definitely open to being wrong. I always am. Um, but this is just what I think um, for the moment. So I'll definitely look forward to trying this out. And um, with all these post list builds, um, you're definitely going to be seeing me experiment with those um, even before the list comes out, at least for Branded Despia and Ad Emancipator. Sky Striker, <laughs> I can't really test having a second Gagiri when the card is still at one. So unfortunately, I'll have to wait for the uh, actual list itself to drop before I can do that. I can't even add extra copy at this point. Um, to even show. So that's where the extra deck is 14. Uh, the 15th card is obviously going to be Sky Striker Ace Kagiri, copy number two. And this deck, I think, got the biggest power boost from the uh, ban list overall, of course. You know, Brandon Despy and Adam Emancipator losing cards are only going to get weaker. Not that much so, or that not that much more so, to be fair. Uh, but they will still get weaker. Sky Striker's got much more powerful, in my opinion, with the second Kagiri here. 
As far as how that affects the build, um, from my personal build and the way I've built Sky Strikers in the past, that doesn't really affect me too, too much, but I will say that there are certain cards um, that some people were using in the past, particularly um, the Hercules base here. Uh, this card was used sometimes in the past mainly for this effect, uh, to recycle Sky Striker cards um, to put Kagiri back, but I think moving forward that this card is no longer necessary. Um, like, obviously, you know, the second attack during each battle phase and destroying a monster is whatever. Um, it was mainly used to recycle stuff and um, it's pretty weak. It's a pretty weak tool in my opinion for doing that among other things you could be playing. Now, you might notice in the topic of recycling cards, I am still playing a single pot of avarice. Um, I don't think this card is like required in this deck. Um, I don't think it was even when Kagiri was at one, honestly. I, I've definitely built iterations of this deck myself where I'm only playing, or I'm, I'm playing zero pot of avarice rather. Um, but I think for this build, I'll go ahead and try it out. It's still a very solid card. Like, even with Kagiri being at two, like, we obviously still recycling a lot of our Sky Striker plays, um, particularly for the long game. And Sky Striker, being a control deck, is going to pretty much always want to go for the long game. Um, so I'm still going to try it out. I can see taking this out for even, like, Pot of Prosperity. If I ultimately decide that... Um, you know, the refuel isn't necessary for the grind game, uh, you know, enough so that I can take Pot of Avarice out altogether and not feel bad about it, then I'll probably just throw in a Pot of Prosperity, uh, to get some more filtering going, so that way we can get some more consistency in the early game as opposed to the late game. This build in particular is definitely geared more towards going second, um, that's gonna be noteworthy, um, mostly because of, like, the Lightning Storm, the three droplets, um, and like the, I mean, to be fair, this deck plays a lot of, uh, hand traps and disruption tools, generally speaking, but, um, I am playing a bit of an excessive amount here, mostly because I aim to go second. Uh, namely, I'm playing not only Drone Lockbirds, but Ghost Spells as well. Um, I really like both of these cards in this meta as just, like, good disruption tools. They both have, um, plenty of decks that they hit, and they both very prominently hit Branded Despia. Uh, both these cards are capable of stopping that deck from continuing its plays. Um, pretty much single-handedly a lot of the time, so uh, I really like having these two particular disruption tools for Sky Strikers in this format. Um, let's see here, what else am I going to touch on with this build? Oh yeah, as far as the extra deck goes, um, there's a lot of different options you could try, uh, particularly in the like Link 2 and Link 3 category. Um, I'm playing both Lina and Dark Charmers here, um, both Light and Dark Charmers, um, obviously because those go well with Selene, which can then go into access code. Uh, for our Link 3, I was playing uh, Ningirisu before. I'm going to try Nightmare Unicorn. I don't really ever use this extra Link 3, no matter what it is, honestly. Um, but I think the Nightmare Unicorn is a little bit more flex flexible than Ningirisu, for those who aren't familiar. Uh, that would be... Uh, that's not how you spell it. So let me just look at World Legacy. Um, unless it's World Chalice support. I always get these two archetypes mixed up. There it is, yeah. Uh, this card right here. Um, I was trying this over Nightmare Unicorn, but I honestly never really made it. Um, again, I never really make Nightmare Unicorn either, to be fair, but um, this, I think, is going to be a little bit more broadly useful, or like generally useful, than uh, Ningirisu is. So uh, that's why I've ultimately decided to go with the Nightmare Unicorn there. Um, and again, the extra deck is only 14 cards because Kagiri will be going to two, and the second copy will be the 15th card there. Um, I don't really know that I have a whole lot else to say about this particular build. Oh, one other thing I did change is that I took out the second Nibiru. Um, Nibiru I think is still very good to have in general if you're playing Maxi, but um, for going second decks, I most of the time like playing two Nibiru. Uh, however, with this current format, there's not that many decks that actually go beyond five summons that see a whole lot of play. Like, um, if you look at like, you know, the tier one and tier two decks that we've put in our tier list video, like, Braided Despia doesn't go above 5 summons, Sword Sultani does to be fair, but Runix don't go above 5 summons, you know, Flaunted Rees don't go above 5 summons, so, you know, the 3 out of the 4 are tier 1 and 2 decks don't go above 5 summons. That being the case, I'm fine playing only 1 Nibiru um, in this deck, where I would probably normally play 2 in a going second build. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I think that covers just about everything I wanted to talk about the deck. Obviously, three Widow Anchor on top of the two Kigiri is going to be very, very powerful as well. Um, 
Just having more disruption tools, more long game in general, obviously it's what a control deck wants. So uh, I'm looking very much forward to testing out Sky Striker uh, once Kigiri goes to two. I think, again, it'll be um, a very nice power boost to the deck. But I think that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. That's about all the time I've got for today. And we've exhausted all the decks that I wanted to cover. So, um, well, you know, I want to cover all of these decks. But, um, again, a lot of these decks haven't really changed much at all. Um, near, not nearly as much as the decks that were impacted by the ban list here. So, uh, that's all the time I've got for the video here. Let's go ahead and move now to the outro. Alright everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the very end of the video like this. That means a whole lot to me. Uh, not just personally, but it's also a great way of supporting the channel as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel in other means, uh, you can of course feel free to comment and or subscribe right here on YouTube. Uh, I'm always looking to the comments section. Uh, you guys leave some pretty awesome feedback uh, as far as like constructive criticism goes when it comes to deck building, gameplay, channel content, all that stuff. So feel free to leave your opinion down there. I will be sure to take a look at that there. Uh, and then subscribing is going to be the best way to get notifications of when these videos drop. That does happen every day, by the way. So if you're looking for daily Master Duel content, you've come to the right place. And there are more places where you can get some daily Master Duel content. If you check out the description below, follow the top link over to my Patreon page. Uh, there for just five bucks a month, which is as much as you pay for a booster pack uh, You'll find a lot more value than a pack full of filler over there. We've got some Previews for content upcoming here on the channel. We've got some exclusive games uh, that are only posted over on patreon over there We've got some Q&A's and then you can also have your name featured in this lovely credit sequence where um, I thank all of the people who are uh, helping contribute over there on Patreon. Uh, it's a huge support to the channel, and it really means a lot as well. So thank you everyone who is donating uh, that is featured here on screen. And again, um, you know, it's not just a pure donation. You do get some more daily Master Duel content over there just for being a part of the Patreon. But I think that's about all the time that I have for today's video. Once again, I just want to thank you so, so very much for sticking all the way to the end of the video. Again, it just means a lot, as I do um, put a decent amount of work into getting these videos out every single day. But that's about all the time that I've got for now. So without further ado, this is Xlex. I'm signing out, and I hope you have a fantastic day.